I don't know if it's just excitement for the upcoming June Direct, which is, as of the time of release of this video, hasn't even happened yet, but we just entered the full rumor and leak season, and it's not disappointing. The odd thing this time around, though, is what the leaks are and where they are coming from. Also, how reliable the leaks continually seem to be. Sure, we recently did a video about ones likely related to the upcoming Nintendo Direct. I suggest you watch that if you want to get an idea of what to expect to see this month from Nintendo. But a lot of these leaks seemingly are for Nintendo Switch 2. Yes, I know that's not the name of the system officially, and I am well aware that we all we can really say about this is it's called the Nintendo Switch successor and that Nintendo accounts will be available on it. Oh, and Nintendo will have an announcement related to it at some point this fiscal year. Okay. Arguably, we actually know a little bit more, and I did another video going over leaks and rumors and Nintendo's own words on the platform you can check out if you want to dive deeper into that. But we're calling it Switch 2 until Nintendo gives us an ounce of an idea of what the actual name is. But today, I thought it might be fun to look at the launch year, maybe even the first couple of years, because a lot of leaks happening lately are seemingly all about the first couple of years. Now before I dive in, I also want to invite you to subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the video, and go down below and tell me your ideal 12 month first year launch lineup for Nintendo Switch 2. Now one game that has seemingly been teased due to a codename leak from Midori is another Nintendo Switch sports style game. She said a project is in the works with the codename Anna, and notably Elsa was the codename for Nintendo Switch Sports. Now, Switch Sports was released in April of 2022, but despite being on the market for only a couple of years, it has already sold 13.11 million copies. Consider this. In August of 2022, the game had only sold 4.48 million units. By November of 2023, it had moved just north of 10 million. Now we're entering summer of 2024, and it is above 13 million. It's evergreen. It just keeps selling. But it was also released late in the life cycle compared to other evergreen Nintendo games. It is possible Nintendo would want the next one to release much sooner on a new platform to give it a longer tail of sales. Nintendo Switch Sports is also something built on top of the Wii Sports family of games, and as such, it's not one that necessarily takes a lot of development time. They also haven't added anything substantial to the game, or anything development intensive anyways, since the release of the Golf Edition, giving them plenty of leeway to possibly have something out by the summer of 2025, just in time for those summer sports nuts like myself out there. Even if it's not until winter, some of the most popular sports happen at that time, and people are more cooped up. Perfect time to play some family fun sports games inside. The development team behind Nintendo Switch Sports is Nintendo EPD Group 4, who also works on other family-friendly games like 1-2 Switch everybody's 1-2 Switch, Nintendo Labo, but also the pretty popular Ring Fit Adventure game. Given the code name for a seemingly new Ring Fit hasn't leaked, it would seem a workout style game may come out in year two or three, as they likely have multiple projects in the works. Ring Fit is also technically not on the same sales pace as Nintendo Switch Sports, so it could be argued that they could see a longer tail matter more to a game like a sequel to Nintendo Switch Sports versus another workout experience. Priorities, of course. Of course, this lineup I am examining does rely on Nintendo Switch 2 
repeating the launch of Switch and landing in March of 2025. But even if it's later, just take everything I am painting today and move it ahead the appropriate amount of months. Now, when talking about evergreen games, Nintendo has one franchise that stands taller than the rest, and that's Mario Kart. Mario Kart 8 was originally a Wii U title that got its own DLC on Wii U and then another pack of DLC on Switch along with the new multiplayer mode. Sure, we had other Mario Kart experiences since 2014. Mario Kart Tour has been a running success story for Nintendo, launching on phones, and there is the Mario Kart theme ride that people rave about at Super Nintendo World. And of course, we can't forget about Switch's own Mario Kart Home Circuit, a real-world augmented reality experience that lets you race and create quite literally your own real-life Mario Kart courses. But obviously, those are side dishes to the main running gaming console-based franchise that is selling at levels not seen ever in Nintendo history without being packed in with every system like Wii Sports was. I have said this for a long time. I think Mario Kart launching in the first nine months is an absolute must. And despite other projects, I do think this Mario Kart game has been in the works for some time. They know Mario Kart 8 is a tough act to follow. This may not be a leak, of course, but that doesn't make it unlikely to occur. Feel free to debate this down in the comments below. Now, Midori gave us another leak, talking about the code name for what she believes to be a new Splatoon game. She uncovered the code name Spiral and believes, based on her research, that it is in fact the next Splatoon. That does sound a little insane, considering that Splatoon 3's DLC just wrapped up this year and Splatoon 3 launched in 2022. I will note, however, that a new Splatoon game launching in 2025 wouldn't actually be insane for the franchise. Splatoon 2 launched just two years after Splatoon 1, and Splatoon 3 did have a much longer gap all the way to 2022. Still, that initial two-year gap certainly opens some possibilities. What's interesting to remember is that the team that makes Splatoon also makes Animal Crossing, and you could understandably assume that is the game coming next, since it last released a new game for that IP in 2020. But since the launch of New Horizons on Nintendo 3DS, they have launched one new Animal Crossing and three Splatoon games. So clearly, Splatoon is a game they do release much more frequently. Splatoon is also a service style game for Nintendo. It doesn't technically have to launch in a finished state making it a strange IP for them. It's actually argued by many that all three Splatoon games may have been quote-unquote rushed due to their unfinished nature. It's also possible at this point, three games in, that that is actually part of the charm and point of the franchise. I will note, however, that as Spiral is Splatoon 4, this may be a 2026 title instead. Not just because it gives a little bit more realistic break between releases, it also allows Splatoon 3 to have its final Splatfest, which directly influences the story in the next game. That Splatfest hasn't happened yet. In addition, Nintendo isn't going to drop every heavy-hitting evergreen smash hit during the first year. Part of keeping momentum going is making sure there is something after those first 12 months, and this could be one of those games in 2026. Now getting back to launch year, Midori teased codename Yu King O, and Yu King was the codename for Breath of the Wild, suggesting this is a new version of the game specifically for Nintendo Switch 2. We know about the Gamescom rumors from last year about a higher resolution demo showing the game seemingly running at 60 FPS, but more importantly, it had instant loading. This does suggest they're at least planning a patch, but Nintendo doesn't typically codename patches. It's also possible this is just the codename for that Gamescom demo and it's never going to release publicly, but... 
Given Midori's track record of talking about projects intended for consumers, we can't rule out that Nintendo may be releasing a new version of the game, even if the system has backwards compatibility. That is the definitive version of the game, at least. All DLC, higher frame rates, better resolution, and yes, instant loading. Maybe there is even some small additional content that ties it even more into the events of Tears of the Kingdom. Maybe they are both getting that treatment and releasing as a combo pack during the launch year of Nintendo Switch 2. I know some reactions to this initially were pretty tepid, even upset, as people are worried Nintendo is going to remaster all of their old games and charge full price again instead of offering free and or cheap patches through backwards compatibility. And I think that's fair for budget conscious gamers to complain about. But Nintendo is a for-profit company, and so long as they provide backwards compatibility, I can still see them offering a new version of the game at full price for the mega fans or first time Switch family owners who can't get enough. I know that's not the most consumer friendly thing in the world, but Nintendo doesn't actually always make the most consumer friendly decisions. They do like making money. I would not be surprised if this is the first in a long line of remastering Switch's greatest hits to be filler between new releases. And I could even argue it makes a lot of business sense to do it. Obviously one game that was hinted at ages ago by Andy Robinson on a podcast at Video Game Chronicle was that he had heard from a singular source that 3D Mario would be the launch title. Now, he hasn't commented on this since those remarks, and we still don't know what the launch game for the system will be. But considering Mario Odyssey came out in 2017 and is the best-selling 3D Mario game ever made, it would sure make a lot of sense with Tears of the Kingdom dropping last year instead of being saved for launch. That's because 3D Mario is ready to lead the charge out the gate. Now, we spent a lot of time talking about that first party stuff and we'll get back to some more but what's so great about switch's first year on the market was the first party but also combined with surprises or at least exciting third party games whether it was collaboration games like sparks of hope or the i can't believe this is here kind of games like nba 2k and doom 2016 and skyrim i think nintendo has surprises up their sleeves the other day, Midori outright stated that Visions of Mana that launches later this year is going to be on Switch 2, ensuring it is not the first Mana game to actually skip a Nintendo console. She also said in the past that all Sega remakes and remasters slash new entries that they announced back during the Game Awards of 2023, which supposedly we're going to get some updates on very soon, are going to end up on Switch 2. Whether well, it's Crazy Taxi... Jet Set Radio, and all the rest is just a welcome sight year one or beyond on Switch 2. And who knows what, if any, of those games are going to be coming soon. We already have reports, by the way, and rumors that the 10-year Call of Duty contract begins with Switch 2. So will Madden and other popular third-party offerings like Assassin's Creed follow suit year one on Switch 2? Time will tell. Naturally, when examining the entire first year lineup for a new platform, there are always going to be curveballs we can't anticipate. Is Platinum Games working on a contract with Nintendo for a new game for the system? Is Monolith Sauce much reported but barely acknowledged by Nintendo's new IP ready to go? And will there be a new gimmicky style casual game day one? Is Intelligent Systems ready with another Fire Emblem for year one? Or two, what's happening over at Next Level Games right now beyond Luigi's Mansion 2 HD? Will Metroid Prime 4 be saved for a cross-gen or even possibly a Switch 2 exclusive release during the first year? There are so many possibilities. This is before getting into widely speculated titles like an Ocarina of Time remake or even new remasters and ports like Tamadachi Life and Kirby Planet Robobot. Assuredly, Nintendo is going to keep ports and remasters a healthy thing for the next platform while diving into a few remakes. 
Heck, Grezzo has historically been working on something for Nintendo. So what's their first Switch 2 project, and when could that release? Heck, do you guys remember the Donkey Kong rumors out there about the Super Mario Odyssey team splitting off, making a new team, working on a new Donkey Kong? Maybe we haven't seen that game on Switch yet because it ended up getting moved over to a year one Switch 2 game. Could make a lot of sense with all the Donkey Kong theme parks opening up. I'm just saying that when we look at the grand scheme of Nintendo Switch 2, that first year lineup and beyond is shaping up to be as fantastic, if not even bigger, than what we ended up getting on Nintendo Switch. Obviously, a lot of personal taste is going to come in, and this is where I'm going to end up repeating something I mentioned a long time ago, and I got kind of panned over this because the rumor it was attached to uh, ended up not coming to fruition. You guys might remember a while back I talked about a GameStop employee, or not really a GameStop employee, let me... Let me actually state this correctly. A person I talk to, whom I trust, who has connections about Switch 2 being revealed, you know, way back February, March time, which ended up not happening, of course. But what I got panned for wasn't so much that it didn't happen, but how emotional I got heading into Switch 2 coming out. Because I mentioned how Switch 2 just became real for me back then. And Switch 2 is real to me even more today. Since those days, I have multiple developers I have talked to as well that have like just reconfirmed over and over again Switch 2 is a thing. Their studio has one, yada yada. And while I don't have any details for you, and look, with the last stuff being wrong that I said that I had a source on, I don't really feel like divulging anything I hear anyways because... Look, it doesn't feel good having people chastise you for being wrong about stuff. So what I did want to emphasize, though, was that I am really excited for Switch 2. The entire reason I was emotional back then is the same reason I'm emotional still to this day. You guys get to celebrate with me, get to be with me. We get to be on this journey for a new Nintendo system launch. And this is the first time... In the history of my life, I've gotten to celebrate a Nintendo system launch with fellow Nintendo fans. I talked about in a previous video how the Switch generation was the first generation I got to be this content creator and this internet personality and really enjoy all that Nintendo has to offer as a community with all of you. But I didn't get to celebrate Switch's launch. We made an unboxing video, but we were a really tiny channel. There was barely anyone around. And I was already working like, you know, three other jobs at the time. I'm now a full-time content creator and I get to really engross myself in the launch of a new platform. I turned 38 this year. I have had every single Nintendo console ever, and none of them was I able to ever purchase and enjoy with fellow Nintendo fans day one. It just didn't happen. It just didn't happen. There's uh, uh, Most people around here don't play Nintendo. Now, a lot of people I, I know today do have switches, but they're the kind of people that get them later in life, right? They, they're not there day one. They're not hyped. They're not excited right out the gate. And then there's me, where to me, every new Nintendo system launch is just like Christmas morning when I was six years old all over again, when you're just hoping to get that one thing you really, really want, except you know what that one thing really, really is. You've already pre-ordered it. You've already paid it off. You already bought a number of games and Amiibo and all these accessories, the pro controllers, and you're so excited and then I sit there by myself in my house being giddy and enjoying and video games can be a very, very personal experience. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that personal experience. But my entire life, I've wanted to have an interpersonal experience in that I have my private moments with myself. But I also get to enjoy my pure joy, giddiness, excitement with others. And I've never been able to do that my entire life until Switch. And it was because of the success of this YouTube channel that I've gotten to enjoy all these little things with Switch with all of you. But I've never gotten to enjoy the hype cycle leading up to launch and the actual launch of a new platform with a like-minded Nintendo community. So if you ever wonder and I get this question a lot. I get made fun of by other content creators for it and just people in general about why I make so many damn videos about Switch 2. This is 
my coup de gras moment when it comes to my excitement as a Nintendo fan. Look, I play games on everything. I got to enjoy the launch of the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. I did some live streams and stuff. And it was kind of weird as a Nintendo channel to watch these live streams of me picking up new systems and the excitement and buzz around that. Meanwhile, I'm a Nintendo YouTube channel. Yeah, we got a thousand people watching me on a live stream pick up the Xbox, the system that's like the least popular platform of the three. It was kind of crazy watching all that happen and seeing all the excitement around that. And it just made me wonder... I've never been able to celebrate the launch of a Nintendo platform with a community before. Now I get to. What's that going to feel like? What's it going to be? How excited are we going to be together? Are we going to be disappointed? Are we going to laugh? Are we going to cheer? Are we going to fire confetti cannons? Are we going to take a shot or two? I don't know what's going to happen. But what I do know is I'm really excited for it. So when you see me continue to make videos like this and others talking Switch 2, talking to leaks and rumors, getting into the weeds of it after Nintendo reveals the system and what the possibilities were and all the you know pre-order madness and how crazy it is and the scalping that's going on because that's inevitable and everything in between, all the things we cover, just know... I'm so excited to enjoy this launch with others. Whether you can get one at launch or not, I hope you check out our launch coverage, our lead-up coverage, because I've never gotten to do this before. I wasn't there during the Wii U life hyping up Switch. I wasn't there making content you know, on Wii back in the day, hyping up Wii U or 3DS. This is my first time doing this. And while I'm going to make some mistakes and some bumps in the road, like that GameStop thing months ago, in the end, I'm just excited. I'm so excited. It honestly feels like it's knocking years off my life, and I'm returning to being that youthful kid again, except this time all my friends are going to be there with me when I open that brand new shiny system. Thank you guys for being here and being part of this experience, both now and hopefully in the not-too-distant future. Thank you guys so much, and I'll catch you in the next video.